Hello, my name's Harold. Um, we're going to work on uh, finishing up the DRO stuff today. And uh, I guess before we get to that, I'm I'm going to tell you a little story. Probably shouldn't tell it. Probably imagine most people would have better sense. But us rednecks have never been known to be too bright. So anyway, I was working out in the garage the other day, and I, I didn't have the right kind of screws. And so I thought, well, I'm going to have to go down to Redneck Supply and get some more screws. And if you go down the Beltway about three miles past Redneck Supply and a half a mile to the right, there's a steel supply place. And I wanted some square tubing. You know, and when you go in there, you either buy a 20 foot piece or they've got a rack up front with pieces of metal that have been cut, you know, short pieces, usually about four foot long. And if they got what you want, you can get it in that small piece. And if not, you got to buy a long one. So I, I go by there and look. And then when I got what I want, I get it. So I went by there after the redneck spine got me a, a piece of uh, square tubing and, you know, and a piece of channel, for, which is what I used on my grill press. And uh, on the way back, I thought, well, you know, I, I wouldn't mind having a, a fifth of Southern Comfort, you know. So... There's this big uh, liquor store uh, chain in uh, Houston. They got stores all over the place. Well, on the Beltway there, between my house and and the highway down there, there's a whole lot of area that used to be just uh, empty land, just woods and stuff. But now it's chock full of brand new developments and stuff. And so there's got little shopping strips moving in, and this company put in a liquor, liquor, liquor store down there. And I got my tank toggle, didn't I? So anyway, I had been working out in the garage, and so I had on my old fire retardant jacket that was left over from when they told me to get a new one at work. You know, and I, even the uniform people didn't want it. They said it was too ragged, so I threw it in my car and figured it'd be just right for oil changes and things because I'm, I'm kind of messy. And I had my worn out shoes on there. I got more than one pair of worn out shoes. But anyway, I had the worn out shoes on there. And I had little flecks of uh, aluminum chips that had come off the mill onto my jacket. And so I probably didn't look too too good. And I might not even shave that morning yet. And uh, so anyway, I, I stopped off in there and I bounced in and I went down the, the one aisle and I saw the Southern Comfort and I got one and they had sent me an email about some kind of Texas Joy Juice or I don't know some kind of rut gut stuff and, and uh, I thought well I'd take like tell you just take a look at it but I didn't see it on that aisle so I went around the corner to to check the next aisle and boom there appeared right in front of me a guy who must have been six foot six real tall and skinny had one of those bald haircuts and a, and a ring in his ear. And he gave me the impression he'd been on a dead run to get there. He says, can I help you? And, you know, my eyes was about that big to talk. This guy, you know, just suddenly popping up in front of my face. And I, I said, no, I think I got what I came for. I'm just looking around. So I go on down the next dial, skip the one he's on because he was sort of in the way. And there's a couple of ladies that work at the store, and they give me this look like, ah, oh, you know, can we help you? you know, no, no, I'm just, just looking around, you know. And so I thought, well, this is too weird. I'm, I think I'm just going to go ahead and pay for what I got and go home. And uh, when I got home, I got to thinking about it. Well, I probably didn't look too reputable in there. In fact, I looked kind of like the corner man. I mean, you probably got them in your town. They got the sign, homeless and such, and they're standing on the, on the busy corners. And I... I could tell you, yeah, I, I, I looked a lot like a corner man, and uh, so I guess that's what they say, clothes make the man, you know. Uh, so let's uh, try and dress up a little bit before you go down to the liquor store. Us guys, you know, we'll we'll take off to the store, and, and however we look, whatever we got on, it's good enough, you know, and it's a good thing that we got on more than underwear sometimes, we'd probably just take off in that. And I noticed something the other day. Probably I'm the last guy in the whole world to ever learn this, but I learned this about YouTube and about how to get notified every time one of these people you subscribe to uploads a new video. And if you go to somebody's channel and you go to the About page and look over by that Subscribe button, and you'll see, by, or down here, sorry, 
by, by the subscribe button, you'll see a little gear like thing right on the end of it. I don't know if you can see that or not, but right on the end is a little gear thing. If you click on that, you'll get some choices, you know. And I discovered with all of mine, none of these were checked, you know. And you want to check those. And sometimes they have another little box over here that says notify me occasionally or always. So the ones that had that box, I clicked on the always. And then I checked both of these choices here. One of them is uh, send me updates and show any uploads in feed. Oh, so only uploads in feed. And that was handy. So I'm, I'm subscribed to about 50 channels. So I spent the next half hour anyway going down the list, clicking them and setting everything up. I wonder why I didn't ever know when somebody uploaded a new video. And now I know when you subscribe, right, right there on the end of that subscribe button, where it is, it's hard to work backwards like this. Out on the end of that subscribe button is a little gear and you click on that thing and it gives you the choice of being notified of, of new videos, which is, that seems kind of handy. So, uh, Let's finish up on the DRO, and uh, that's where we'll go now. Okay, this is a Y measurement. Indicators on the zero mark. I ran out of travel. Go the other way. Indicators on the z on the zero. And point one oh two eight. Three thousandths off. Or just about the same as. I got my genuine Chinese DRO zeroed. We're going to put on the genuine Chinese dial indicator and we will compare the two. Get right in on that thing. And my head will get in the way here in a minute because I've got uh, I'm going to lean over there to see where it's lined up. And pretty much lined up there. Let's go back and look at the uh, the DRO. Point one oh oh four. So I guess it works right, but I'm not very good at uh, holding things still. Okay, we start another day, and it's uh, relatively warm in Texas, getting close to seventy. I got this jacket on with a short sleeve shirt under it and I'm probably going to peel out of this jacket pretty soon. But uh, anyway, that's neither here nor there. I'm up to doing the, the Z axis and what I figured to do is to drill a hole all the way through here to put on them screws that hold this guy on and screw it to this side of this guy here, one at the top and one at the bottom. And this, this little piece right here that does the reading, he's what's going to move here instead of the scale moving because that fits the situation better. I don't know if they're supposed to do it that way or not, but that's what we're going to do it. Because <clears throat> that's what we got, you know. Uh, they sent, sent me with lots of nice big strong brackets, but they're, they're more for a Tom Lipton size machine you know or Mr. Pete size and speaking of all that I I got uh, some stickers now from most of my favorite major uh, machine shop channels except Mr. Pete I don't think he's got a logo or stickers either one and he's I suppose he's number one he's got about twice the subscribers as the next guy down the line as far as I can see but that's neither here nor there things are looking up and uh, today I'll get this uh, get this little Z axis installed and 
get back to working on my wheel weight mold. I'm not going to show on camera all the little hole drilling and stuff because that, that would bore me too. So in a little bit you will magically see that thing appear, probably. Besides, the camera distracts me and makes it hard for me to work. All right, I drilled a hole in there all the way through and I can stick my screwdriver in there and turn the screw so that much of it should work pretty good to mount this thing. I've got a sixteenth of an inch there that's, you know, of things in the way that wasn't there before. I may have to get a longer screw. We'll find that out in a minute. I believe if I had uh, a couple little spacers like this to go in these holes right here, I can move in where you can see it good, to go in these holes right here, that my brackets would sit just a great deal straighter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to machine some because this is, this is not the right size. It's a little bit too small. So we'll just get on the lathe and cut. Okay, to make spacer, I've got a piece of, I guess what they call mystery metal here. Something that I'd use sometime in the future. I'm in the past, future, well, who knows what I did. Anyway, I'm going to make a couple little spacers out of this. <laughs> My chuck key. I'm, I'm sort of chuck key challenged around here in that I keep losing it. You know, I use the same chuck key on the drill press and on the lathe. And so you'd think it would either be at one place or the other, but uh, the last time I laid it down, it was over there on that uh, mill table. So where it ought to be don't don't mean much of anything. We we'll just drill this thing in there fairly far, so I don't have to worry about. Uh, part is going to, for me is going to be to cut it off identical one and you know identical to the other we'll see how I come out what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to set up a dial indicator and hopefully that will make it possible for me to be more accurate than I would be otherwise. Make sure this little booger gets on center. That's the bad part about this lantern type tool post. It can be really hard to get on center. Not so hard to get straight, but hard to get it on center. Let's see what that looks like. It's not straight enough, but it's... All right, now then, turn off the camera a little bit while I find a dial indicator. Okay, I've set up an indicator, or a clock as Double Boost would call it, and uh, I'm gonna use that to cut this thing off. Hopefully everything will work out right. So we're going to come forward a quarter of an inch. Well, I need to set this thing even first. All right, if it's setting even, I'm going to come here. All right, now it will go a quarter of an inch. So there's one, two, fifty. Here we take a little bit. I'm going to be lucky to get two out of this after I... 
thing up again and we'll go two hundred and fifty thousandths and we come around one whoops I ran out of clock didn't I all right so We'll move this thing. We move pushing this up and move it. It's easier to move than the than the indicator. Alright. We'll start out right there. At a hundred, two hundred. Well. Two fifty. I doubt anything's gonna be close enough for that to matter. Two Shame to tell you this, I actually bought those little aluminum ones at the, at the uh, Redneck Supply because I was too lazy to make them, but they don't have any bigger than that, so here it is. I was down to making my own. All right, back off the camera for a little work. Okay, so we've got the, uh, the DRO installed rather than putting dust covers over a couple of things, and I'm going to use some double sided tape for that, so. I have to wait till I can get some, but I've got that guy there mounted. Not real pretty, but he's on there. There's the uh, X scale, and underneath everything there is the, the Y. I need to get a piece of tape for that or another screw for the cover. And whoa! So we'll just take a little movement with a couple of things there and let you get a better look at, uh, at the fact that it's really working. So here we go with the Z scale. You can see it's tracking on really good. And I'm going to run it all the way down to the point. Y scale, cranking on. So, I'm finally, uh, finally living in the lap of luxury there, huh? I think that'll make everything a lot easier for me. Maybe I can make things fit. 